Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Lewis Gren, board certified family medicine physician. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the COVID-19 vaccines that are either currently available or should be available soon in both the US as well as around the world. We're gonna to touch on some of the similarities as well as differences of each of the vaccines. And then finally, we'll talk about which vaccine might be the best for you. All right, let's get started. All right, so let's first talk about the two vaccines that are currently authorized for emergency use in the US as well as several countries around the world. Those are the messenger RNA vaccines currently being distributed by Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna. These vaccines use messenger RNA to encode a protein within the muscle cells of the recipient to then display a spike protein on the surface of the cells that induces an antibody response. This antibody response is then ready to respond to the actual virus should you be infected. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going through the mechanism of actions of these vaccines because there's plenty of other videos out on the internet that can do that for you, probably in much greater detail than I'm going to spend today. So I'm going to go just briefly through how these work and so we can highlight some of the differences of how some of the newer vaccines coming out work just a little bit different to induce that immunity. Okay, so how effective are the messenger RNA vaccines? Because really, both Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines are very similar. They're both 95 to 94% effective at preventing COVID infection. Now, that's important to note for a couple of reasons. Number one, that's an astronomically high level of effectiveness. But it's also important to note that those studies were done prior to the current variants circulating around the globe that has been shown to lower the effectiveness of the vaccines just a little bit. So as we're going through this video and talking about comparing effectiveness of the vaccines, know that they're probably all very similar if we account for the fact that some of the later trials being done on the newer vaccines uh, are being done in places where the new variants are circulating more so than when the trials were done on the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. Okay, so the other endpoint that was looked at in the trials is also whether or not they were able to prevent severe COVID. And both the Pfizer as well as Moderna vaccines did this extremely well. In fact, Moderna showed no severe infections in their trial, and Pfizer only had one in the vaccine group. So they are all, they are both highly uh, efficient at preventing severe disease. Okay, so what are some of the other similarities? Uh, both Pfizer and Moderna require cold storage. Pfizer a little bit colder than Moderna. You might have heard that Pfizer has to be stored at the ultra cold temperatures, whereas Moderna has to be stored at slightly warmer temperatures. Doesn't require a uh, ultra, ultra cold freezer though. So where do they differ? Really, Pfizer and Moderna only differ significantly on the population that they are approved for. So the Moderna vaccine is approved for persons 18 plus, whereas the Pfizer vaccine is approved to 16 plus as they included um, 16 and 17 year olds in their trial. Other than that, these two messenger RNA vaccines are extremely similar. Okay, so the next vaccine we're gonna talk about is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine or the Jensen Pharmaceuticals vaccine, which is likely to be the next vaccine authorized for emergency use in the United States, as well as used around the world. Now, this vaccine has several differences from the original two vaccines that we just talked about. First off, the way that this vaccine works is different. Instead of using messenger RNA particles, this vaccine actually uses an adenovirus vector, which an adenovirus vector is a modified virus that carries, in this case, information about the spike protein into the cell that then causes the cells to create the proteins that then express the spike protein on the surface of the cell and induce immunity, very similar to how the messenger RNA process is also addressing the spike protein. In fact, all these vaccines are eventually, regardless of how they start, aimed at producing antibodies to the spike protein of the coronavirus. Okay, so there's also some differences in the efficacy, but I think we have to throw a big asterisk on here. 
because the efficacy in the published data so far is lower than what we saw with the original two vaccines. So the efficacy for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is 72% across all sites. And this vaccine was trialed in multiple different sites around the world, including places where the new variants that are known to decrease the effectiveness of the vaccines were circulating during the trial period. That's different from the first two vaccines, both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines, that whose trials were actually done before those variants started circulating. So we really can't say that this one is much less effective than the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines because we don't have good head-to-head -head data on that. I suspect if Pfizer and Moderna recreated their trials today, they may see different results. In fact, in their Petri dish trials, they have shown decreased efficacy against some of the new variants that are circulating. So in this case, we have a vaccine that is still very efficacious though. 72% is still very good. And in fact, if we look at its ability to prevent severe COVID, which was another endpoint that we talked about in the first two vaccines, um, it actually showed an 85% efficacy against severe COVID after 28 days and a 100% efficacy against severe COVID at 49 days. So again, it matches the efficacy at least of severe COVID to the first two vaccines. That's important because it's that severe COVID that will keep our hospitalizations low and ultimately keep our death rate low. Now, some of the other differences for this one, and a huge difference as far as how quickly we might be able to vaccinate individuals around the world, uh, both with the existing vaccine as well as this one, is it only requires one dose. That is going to allow us to reach a level of full immunization much quicker with this vaccine because individuals will not have to come back at either 21 or 28 days later like they have to do in the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. So this vaccine can also be stored at temperatures that are closer to a normal refrigeration temperature, which again makes distribution and storage much easier for this vaccine. Okay, the next vaccine that we're gonna talk about is the vaccine that was developed by AstraZeneca and Oxford out of the UK. Now, this one's actually already being used in several countries around the world, but has not been presented for review by the FDA or CDC in the United States yet. Um, and the reason why it hasn't, even though it was one of the first vaccines to actually start clinical trials, is there was a bit of a mistake in one of their clinical trials, and I'll talk about that here in just a second. So again, this vaccine is a, an adenovirus vaccine, very similar to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in how it works. This one had, a, a, again, like I mentioned, a little bit of a, a difficulty with their trials in that in one of the trial locations, the recipients only received a half dose of the vaccine at their first dose, at their first injection, I should say. Whereas in other locations, they actually received a full dose. Now this vaccine is a two-dose vaccine done 28 days apart. And interestingly, when they looked at the data, so they didn't realize that they had given the wrong dose of the vaccine during the trial. They only realized that after they unblinded it and began to analyze the data when the trial was over. And interestingly, what they saw was those individuals who got the half dose actually had a higher efficacy of 90% versus those that got the whole dose for both injections had a lower efficacy of 62%. Now, I'm not sure that this is as drastic as it seems on the surface because again, these trials were done in two different locations and the location with the lower efficacy actually had some of the circulating variants, whereas the half dose trial location did not. So hard to know whether or not there's truly a large difference between using a half dose versus a whole dose on that first injection. But it was an interesting statistic to see nonetheless. Now, because of that, AstraZeneca has had to go back and redo their phase three trial in the United States in order to present their data to the FDA for authorization. So it's gonna be a little while longer before we see this vaccine being used in the United States. Now, 
in their endpoints that they have published so far on those trials across all the locations, they were also 100% effective at preventing severe COVID. So very consistent across all the available vaccines so far at preventing severe COVID. And that is extremely important so that we can decrease hospitalizations and ultimately decrease deaths from this terrible disease. Okay, so the last vaccine that we're gonna talk about is Novavax. Novavax is unique and that it is using yet a third way of inducing immunity. It's using a recombinant protein with an adjuvant to induce immunity again to that spike protein. Now, its effectiveness was a little bit less in its clinical trials, but again, I think there's a caveat to that. So the Novavax vaccine was actually trialed in three locations, the United States, the United Kingdom, as well as South Africa. And it was trialed during a period where, especially in South Africa, as well as UK, the new variants were circulating. And so its efficacy across all sites was shown to be 85% at preventing symptomatic COVID a little bit less than the original vaccines of Moderna and Pfizer, but still really well if you consider that in South Africa, the South African variant was the most predominant strain during its trials. Now, unfortunately, against the South African strain, or at least in the South African site, it was only about 60% effective. But just like the other vaccines, it was 100% effective at preventing severe COVID. So again, very important that all of these vaccines have similar efficacy against severe COVID so we can decrease hospitalizations as well as decrease the death rate with these vaccines. Now, another good thing about the Novavax vaccine is that it does not require the ultra cold or ultra ultra cold storage like Moderna and Pfizer. So it can be distributed to parts of the world that won't have access to these ultra cold freezers. Again, making it a little bit easier to distribute to places that some of the other vaccines may not be able to reach. So just to recap, all of the vaccines that we've talked about, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, AstraZeneca, and Novavax are highly effective, better than we could ever have imagined when they started their clinical trials and started developing these vaccines. Yes, we are seeing some decreased efficacy in the recent trials due to some of the circulating variants, but they are all responding to that by looking at updating their vaccines or testing booster shots to the current vaccine. There is some differences in how they're stored, as well as there are a one-shot or a two-shot vaccine. Currently, the only one-shot vaccine is the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. There is some subtle differences in, that the, in the time period between the two vaccines, um, but that's fairly immaterial at this point. Most importantly, they all are approximately 100% effective at preventing severe COVID. Now, which vaccine is right for you? Well, because these vaccines are still in scarce supply, we really can't be choosy about which vaccine you get. Unfortunately, that's going to be determined by which vaccines are authorized in your country, as well as which vaccines are distributed to your area. In the United States, the federal government, as well as the state governments, are distributing the vaccines out to hospitals, pharmacies, and physician offices. And unfortunately, at this point, I think you're going to have to just take what you can get. We really can't be choosy at this point of which vaccine we get. Now, thankfully, they all work. They're all very efficacious. And so you really shouldn't be disappointed if you get one of the newer vaccines that has shown to have slightly less efficacy because in the end, I don't think this is really gonna be that big of a difference, especially against some of the new circulating variants that are starting to become more prominent even in the United States. So, all right, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know which vaccine you've gotten if you've been lucky enough to get one so far. Uh, consider liking this video, it helps others see the video. And I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel for more videos in the future. And as always, remember, be safe out there.